Hi everyone, I'm doing some more research with collision layers and collision mask. So I'm reading this comment in godoengine.org. Not 100% sure who answered, but I think it is Walt. And uh, what I understood or what I learned is that player can interact with enemy and objects interact or collide and the player exists on the first layer but will interact with the second and the third mask so masks are the enemy node or the object node and masks are telling what the player is going to interact with. So you can read it like this. Okay, where is the player located? In what layer? Okay, it's on the first layer. Okay, and then with what objects or bodies can the player interact with? Okay, it says here it has a mask on the second layer and a third layer. Okay, what is the second layer? It says here Collision layer is set on the second bit. Okay, so we know that enemies is on the second layer. And from this line we can read that player can interact with the enemy. But it also can interact with the third layer. And the third layer is the object node. Collision layer is set on the third bit. Okay, now we know what player can interact with. What about the enemy? We know that the enemy is set on the second layer and it can interact with the first layer. So it can only interact with the player, not the object because the object is on layer three and not the enemy because the enemy is on layer two. It can only interact with the first layer, with the player layer. Very nice rhyme. Player layer. So this is interesting. Let's check if this is true. Let's put one enemy here and a second enemy here. And let's see if they collide with each other. All right. That's interesting. Looks like they are having a fight. So let's check what's going on. We go to enemy and then we go to enemy, which is a kinematic body 2D. And here it says the enemy exists on layer one, which is the same layer as the player and the enemy can interact with layer one so it can interact with both the player and themselves. So what if we tell that an enemy exists on layer two only? That means that the enemy can interact with the player with only the player and not themselves. The player, however, cannot interact with the enemy because the enemy is on layer two or another dimension. So let's see if we understand this right. Will you look at this? They don't collide with each other. So what happens if we stand here, okay, it looks like the enemy interact with the player and the projectile works. So why is that? Why is it that the enemy don't just fall down? 
that is because we're telling that the enemy should interact with layer 1 and the tile set exists on layer 1. So if we shoot a fireball, wouldn't that fireball exist on layer 1 only? And what it can interact with, shouldn't that only be on layer 1? Because the mask is set on the first layer. That's maybe true, but we are telling that the enemy can interact with the first layer. So there is a connection there from the enemy to layer 1. From layer 2 to layer 1, but not layer 1 to layer 2. I'm not sure what that will have as an effect in Godot, but let's just go with it of what we know so far. The fireball exists on layer 1 and can only affect bodies on layer 1. But what if we explicitly tell that it should only affect bodies on layer 2? Wouldn't that mean that it will just fly through all the tile set? Let's try this out. Right, let's try to shoot both the tile set and the enemy. Okay, so it collides with the tile set. And it effectively collides with the enemy. So, why did the enemy just drop down? Okay, it was my mistake. I was testing the collision masks and collision layers and set them to zero. That was the cause of them falling down. What I think is that if you set it to zero programmatically, it will not exist on any layer and will not collide with any layer. Because I believe this is zero based values. No, I'm sorry. This is zero based values and this is one based values. So zero is effectively telling that masks or layers will not do anything. So I guess that fireball exists on layer one and they will shoot bodies on layer two. But because fireballs exists on layer one, that means that the tile set will see the fireball. It will exist in that dimension. So that basically means that if we were the fireball, we would just be surprised because suddenly we hit something and we can't see it. Because we told the tile set to collide with anything on layer 1. But from the fireball's perspective, it only knows how to collide with the enemies or anything on layer 2. So it's like when it collides with the tile set, it is just saying, whoops, it's not my fault. And the tile set would say, yeah, my bad. Something like that. Can we make the fireball fly through the tile set? I think that if we move it to layer 2, it will fly through the tile set because the tile set can't interact with layer 2. So let's test it out. Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? 
So let's verify the collision mask and the collision layer. If we set it to zero, then we get the data from layer zero, one and two. So you will see that all of them are false. So let's set the breakpoint here so that we can understand it quicker. All right, I didn't do any change here. All of them are false. Let's check this one. Whoops, it falls down. And let's shoot these guys. And we can see that they will all fall down. And that is because we are telling it to exist nowhere and interact nowhere. And why do I believe that? I believe that because we can't get the bits when it's set to zero, because this is one based and this is zero based. We are setting it to the first layer. Layer zero doesn't exist. Now let's see what happens. All right, the debugger didn't go off. That happens sometimes unless I forgot to turn on the debugger. Okay, something is seriously wrong. Maybe the reason is I forgot to set the breakpoint. Whee! Right, so now we hit the breakpoint and we can see that A, A and B, A is true. So the mask bits are zero based. And that would mean that zero means anything that exists on layer one, the first layer. Another thing is if we do it like this, we remove the settings on the previous layer and just move it to the second layer. So I want to try that idea, L but let's see what happens here. So now AB is true and BB is true. Are you with me on that? We moved everything to the second layer, meaning mask one because it's zero based so what we if we want a a to be true and b b to be true we want well in order to do that we have to use another function and that is set collision mask bit so what bit should we set and is it true or is it false we want the first bit to be set to true and we want the second bit to be set to true. So I will debug this and I'm starting now. All right, done. AA true, AB true, and BB true. And BB true is because get collision layer bit one. Anything on layer two, and what are we? What are we? What does this class represent as node? It's enemy. So what is enemy? Open scene for enemy. Enemy is on layer two. So that's why. My question to you is, are we getting a firm grasp on how collision masks and layers works? I feel that I am getting a deeper understanding and I feel more confident that I got the grasp of it. There is one thing that I want to try. I got a comment from James XXXYZ. Instead of setting disabled directly, 
I should call the function set deferred. And if I'm right, I read about it, it makes a more safer way to set it. Something like that. So here we have set deferred. There's also a function called deferred. But let's see what... This is interesting. After the current frames physics step. So not inside. Call deferred is a bit more than just set deferred because you can choose alternate way to use set. So shouldn't it be a get then or something? I don't know. I can't see a get deferred. Not sure why they use it like that. So set deferred, lowercase, and no string or anything else. Yes, true or false. And that is pretty much what I do here. So let's see what is going on. Getting ready for attack. All right, let's see the collision. Uh, nope. Doesn't work. The interesting thing is, all right, I'm a little bit stupid. I must set it on the collision shape object like this. So let's try this. Ready, shoot. Collision. Yeah, it works. Awesome. The enemy was falling down, so it needs to be set to enabled in the timer timeout. What worries me is that if the execution is done after the physics process, then it will go all through all of this. Maybe it will still fall down. Let's see. So let's run. Poof. No collision. And wait and see when the enemy wakes up. All right, it works fine. And the f footings are exactly on the green line there. I would imagine otherwise that it would fall down one pixel because the gravity will have an effect before disabled is set to false. So thank you James Triple X Y set for the recommendation. Alright, this is the end of this video and thank you for watching. Take care and I see you in my next video. Bye bye.